Hello. Ni hao. Welcome back. 欢迎回来 to Wisdom Wednesday with Johnny Tiger. On May nineteen, twenty twenty one. I started learning how to cook for myself、uh, when I was about sixteen, maybe fifteen. Now, there's some kind of a、uh, very ironic、uh, situations, ironic uh, paradox, uh, with regarding to when I first started to learn how to cook. Because you see, one of the first people to teach me how to cook was my dad. Uh, my dad taught me how to scramble egg, how to fry egg, how to do sunny side up egg, how to make instant noodle,、uh, and how to make a sandwich. My dad's idea was,、uh, and this is what he told me. He said, "As long as you know how to cook egg, you will never starve to death because egg are always easy to come by. They are always、uh, the cheaper of the." Uh, protein sources you can get, and you don't need a lot of them for a good、uh, amount of nutrition. So those were the first things I learned how to cook: scrambled egg, fried egg,、uh, all kind of things to do with egg. And then from there, of course, it went on to uh, uh, fried rice. Because once you know how to fry egg, then it's a simple step to add rice to that. And of course, you know, we Chinese people, we like our fried rice. There, that's my、uh, offensive Chinese accent. I'm gonna say, intentionally, anyway. <laughs>、um, now, why was that ironic? Because my father was also one of the very few people who strongly opposed to me learning how to cook.、Uh, later, about two or three later, years later, when I Uh, told him, I said, "Hey, I really would like to learn more about cooking," and he was vehemently、uh, opposing to that. He he said, "Why? You, you already know all you need to know. You know how to make sandwich. You know how to make new、uh, instant noodle. You know how to fry egg. If you are any kind of a real man, you don't need to learn how to cook, because if you are any kind of a real man, you get a woman to do the cooking for you. So if you persist on wanting to learn how to cook, that tell me you are not a real man." That tell me that you don't think you are good enough to get a woman, and I I, I still remember to this day the, that that was such a heated argument between the two of us,、uh, and and it just led to nowhere. I mean, in the end, he's welcome to his opinion. I、uh, still went on to learn how to cook regardless,、uh, and you know I've been living on my own ever since. <laughs> so we can say that if I didn't learn how to cook,、uh, I probably would have、uh, starved to death <laughs> a long time ago,、uh, living on my own, and、uh, quite often didn't have the money to even eat at a restaurant in the early days、uh, when I was going to college and stuff like that. So today、uh, I want to talk about. One of the most simple, basic,、uh, staple, commonplace Chinese food that we all know about—the fried rice, the fried rice—that <laughs>、um, a lot of us enjoy, a lot of us even know how to make at least our own versions of it, and you definitely see it in almost every Chinese restaurant. Now. Fried rice has been around in China for a long, long time.、Uh, the oldest record go back to the Tang Dynasty,、uh, so we are going back maybe seven hundred years ago. That was the、uh, oldest written record of、uh, fried rice.、Um, in Tang Dynasty, there was uh, uh, the, the the historical record said. One of the northern lords of the Tang Dynasty, of one of the、uh, cousins of the emperor at the time, who ruled the land in the north.、Uh, no matter where he went, he always made sure that people 
his chef or whoever that was preparing his food knew how to make one of his favorite dishes. Back then, they didn't call it fried rice. Back then,、uh, this lord called his fam、uh, his favorite dish the golden flour rice. The golden flour rice. Because when you think about it, it's a、uh, when you when you、uh, mix the egg in at the end with the rice and there's the green of the green onion. It, it does look like、uh, kind of a, a flowery color、uh, in your rice, as, as, especially if you make it right. I mean, if you make it wrong, then you can turn into all kind of ugly, weird color. But、uh, this is how Chinese people judge if a Dish if a plate of fried rice is made properly, often by just looking at it, and if they look at the fried rice and it have、uh, where it's supposed to be golden, it's golden. Where there's supposed to be white rice, it's white. Where there's supposed to be green onion, it's green. Then that's a proper、uh, plate of fried rice.、Uh, if it come out、uh, with some weird like red here and black there and blue here, then obviously it's something's、uh, weird. With that fried rice,、uh, that is how usually Chinese people judge fried rice by is by how it looks, the color. Now, one of the interesting thing about fried rice is it's not until modern time that people call it fried rice.、Uh, up and all the way up until the、uh, last dynasty in China, the、uh, Qing Dynasty in China. So up until about a hundred years ago, it was called mushu rice. A lot of you have heard of mushu pork, mushu、uh, lamb, mushu chicken in Chinese restaurants, but I'm sure almost none of you have ever seen mushu rice on the menu. But if you ever see it, that's what it is. Fried rice were once upon. Uh, uh, once upon a time, called mushu rice. What is mushu? Exactly, I got I got asked this before. A lot of people ask me what what exactly is mushu. What what does that mean?、Uh, there was a, a a character in Mulan was named Mushu.、Uh, what what is a mushu? Exactly. I always kid people and I say mushu means cricket, and that that. Just turn the、uh, scare them because they say, "Wow, the mushu pork is like cricket fried pork." But,、uh, but now, actually, what mushu is? Mushu is a kind of flour,、uh, kind of like uh, uh, how should I say? Mushu is like peach blossom.、Uh, it, it, it's a flower that's like peach blossom.、Uh, when it when when it is blooming, it's all orange and golden in color. So they called it mushu rice again because of the color it's supposed to be.、Uh, it, it's because of that、uh, orange yellowish color that the egg gives to the fried rice. Now, of course,、uh, when I was growing up, and、uh, you know, in modern Chinese Taiwanese history,、uh, a lot of families, a lot of kids, grew up on fried rice. But a lot of kids didn't grow up on the proper kind of fried rice. Like I already mentioned, it has to be that orange golden color because of the egg. But because a lot of a lot of family、uh, cannot afford eggs every day, most of the time, if you were to travel back fifty years, if you were to travel back forty years, and you go to Taiwan and you go to China. And you go to a random household, not not one of the more wealthy ones, but you go to a, like uh, a more uh, uh, medium level, uh, uh, regular minimum wage household, and they invite you for dinner. And they tell you you're getting fried rice. You may be disappointed, because when they said fried rice back then, they did mean that it, it's just fried rice. How they made it was green onion, salt and pepper, and rice, and a little bit of oil. That's it. You heat the oil out in out, out in the wok, and then you throw in a handful of green onion, and you make sure the green onions are nice and crispy, and then you 
throw in the rice and then you make in a little bit of salt and pepper and you fry the heck out of it make sure the flavor of the onion and the flavor of the salt and the oil goes infuse the whole uh, pot of rice and that's it that was fried rice when i was growing up uh, for a lot of family in my family uh, it was a little bit better because we actually uh, had the uh, means to uh, afford eggs and meat and a lot of it so i didn't have to uh, get that at home, but I remember going to friend's house and I had the school friends and classmates when I went to their houses and uh, they, they they asked me to stay for dinner. So many times I was surprised with, with what they called fried rice. It was served to me. It was just literally fried rice with a little bit of green onion in it and nothing else. Now that is your most low level, that's the most basic fried rice. Now, how high can it go? What is the most upper level of fried rice? I mean, we, when we look at Chinese menu today, we see, as, depending on the Chinese restaurant you go to, you might see uh, 10, 20, 30 different kinds of fried rice. You'll see beef fried rice, chicken fried rice, fish fried rice, prawn fried rice, shrimp fried rice, uh, chicken and beef fried rice, chicken and shrimp fried rice, uh, and then th those are easy to identify, of course. It's telling you what kind of meat it's using in the fried rice, but basically it's the same. And then you see something more different. You see something called uh, 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 the honeymoon fried rice, which is half tomato and uh, tomato fried rice, and half of it is uh, a shrimp fried rice. Half of it is tomato and beef. The other half is uh, shrimp and green beans. That is the honeymoon fried rice. And then you see the Fuk Chow seafood fried rice, my personal favorite. It's a fried rice with a lot of uh, uh, different kind of seafood. Uh, it has a gravy on it, so it's a little bit of a more wet fried rice. Really delicious. Uh, if you never tried Fuk Chow seafood fried rice, I recommend give that a try. Uh, hopefully you'll like it. Especially if you love seafood, you'll really love that. But, the highest uh, standard, the, the pinnacle, the alpha and the omega of fried rice for Chinese people is the Yang Chao fried rice. Yang Chao fried rice. You see that on some Chinese restaurant menu. And I imagine some of you have tried it and you're thinking that, I, you're thinking, no, how can that be? How can that be the pinnacle of Chinese food, how can that be the pinnacle of fried rice? It, it's uh, just as cheap as all the other fried rice, and all it is is uh, ham and shrimp. It's a ham and shrimp fried rice. Why is it so special? What's so special about it? Well, let me tell you this. The Yang Chao fried rice we have today in restaurants here in North America and in a lot of different parts of China, yes, all it is is ham and shrimp fried rice. And that, there's nothing special about that. But that is not the real Yang Chao fried rice. Because very few restaurants will make the, the real Yang Chao fried rice. It's too expensive to make. The real Yang Chao fried rice is way too expensive to make. And not many people would even want to spend the money to eat something like that unless you go to a uh, like super high-end, super high-end uh, uh, hotel or seafood restaurant uh, where you will see, uh, sometimes you'll see a young chow fried rice on the menu and you're thinking, holy crap, that's a $90, $100 plate of fried rice. But that's young chow fried rice. I can get it for five bucks down the street. Why is it so different? Because they are making it the real way. That's the real young chow fried rice. Yang Chao fried rice's history go back to, again, the Qin Dynasty. So we're talking about 100, 150 years ago in China. 100 or so years ago, the richest part of China was Yang Chao, which was the uh, biggest harbor in China, where uh, the, uh, the, the river, the, one of the greatest, uh, biggest river, meet the sea. Uh, so 
there you can imagine a lot of commerce going in, a lot of commerce going out, a lot of goods coming in, a lot of goods going out, a lot of、uh, merchants, a lot of big boats, ships, and、uh, traffic going through there. And in this very rich city, the richest person was the guy who was in charge of. Uh, the the regulation of salt. It was it was the head of the salt distribution network. Now salt back then was very expensive in China and in most part of the world. Salt was very valuable. Not like today. You know, today you can like go to McDonald's and they put salt on your French fries like it doesn't cost anything. But back then, a hundred years ago, salt was very valuable, very expensive, almost like. Gold, almost like sugar. So the person who was in charge of the salt、uh, distribution network in China was one of the richest、uh, people in China. He invented、uh, that Yangchao fried rice. He invented Yangchao fried rice, and it was said that this person,、uh, the, the guy, this guy. He his idea of fried rice would cost about fifty ounces of silver to make. Back then, that's one meal, one plate of Yangshao fried rice. A hundred years ago, fifty ounces of silver. Now, to put it in context, one ounce of silver back then is the equivalent of two hundred dollar today. Which means this guy was sitting there eating a plate of fried rice that back then cost about ten thousand dollar to make. Ten thousand dollar to make a, a plate of fried rice. That's crazy. But that that's Yangchao fried rice.、Uh, that's the the very original Yangchao fried rice. But then, of course, most commoners couldn't、uh, afford that. Can't afford that. So people started、uh, doing it however they like. They put in ham or bacon or shrimp and stuff like that.、Um, so for quite a while, Yangchao fried rice. There's no standard when you order Yangchao fried rice. It's like that you you never know what you're going to get in it. In 2018, so not that long ago, in 2018, the、uh, food regulation board in Yangchao in China. Decided to start to actually published a list of standards they expect on their food, and they lay down the standard for Yangchao fried rice. How to make Yangchao fried rice properly? So for any restaurant in Yangchao, in the in the city, in the uh the 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 area of Yangchao, who want to put Yangchao fried rice on their menu, they have to make it to this standard. Otherwise, they cannot call it Yangchao fried rice. They'll get a fine for that. So, what is this standard? According to the Food Administration Board in Yangchao, published in 2018, a pro- proper Yangchao fried rice. The 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 only way the standard、uh, for you to、uh, be able to call it Yangchao fried rice, it have to have three eggs. It have to have eight. Ingredients on top of that, okay. Three eggs and the eight ingredients on top of that, which are abalone, sea cucumber, ham, shrimp, chicken, mushroom, bamboo shoot, and green beans. All the eight ingredients. Now, the shrimp and the chicken and the mushroom and stuff like that, those are not very expensive. Anyone can go and buy those. But when you think you got to make a Plate of fried rice that have those things and the abalone and the sea cucumber in it, that turn it into an extremely pricey plate of fried rice. So that is Yangchao fried rice. That is currently currently the proper standard, the high standard of、uh, fried rice, the the most expensive, the most uh, uh, exorbitant, the most、uh, highly Ranked fried rice in Chinese dishes.、Uh, if you want to be licensed as a plate of Yangchao fried rice, 
you need to have all those ingredients three eggs sea cucumber abalone chicken ham uh, shrimp and bamboo shoot and green bean and mushroom didn't say anything about rice didn't say anything about a green onion I think it's just assumed that you're going to put those things in so but anyway now with that said with that said unless you actually live in young child uh, no one really care about what they say it's a standard people from other part of China people in Taiwan people in Hong Kong people in the rest of the world still make young child fried rice the way they like it nice and cheap ham and shrimp green onion and egg and rice that's it now before I finish up today's uh, episode I also want to quickly say that you now just in case you don't know how to make fried rice or you don't know, you want to uh, find out how to make a fried rice and in Chinese tradition there are three different ways of making fried rice uh, in the very beginning people made fried rice one of two ways way number one yes you beat your egg in a big bowl you beat your egg and then after your egg is well beaten you take cooked rice and then throw the cooked rice in and mix it up with the egg and then you heat the big pot or you heat your pan or wok uh, throw in oil and then green onion and then salt and then once it's nice and hot you pour in the mixture of egg and rice and then fry the heck out of it and that is way number one way number two is you heat the oil you heat the oil and then you throw in the green onion and then you throw in the rice and then fry the rice with the green onion with a little bit of salt and then when it's almost done you pour in the beaten egg and then mix it really well and then you toss in some green onion gradually people came to realize that these two ways while it looked nice because it's all golden and uh, orange it the texture left a lot to be desired because when you mix the egg with the rice like that it can all gunky and yucky and lumpy your your rice are all stuck together okay so people came up uh, with a third way of making fried rice and this is uh, actually my personal favorite this is how I fry my rice you can try it sometime if you haven't done it this way I heat up the oil and uh, I beat the egg in a big, big bowl I heat up the oil and I dump the egg in and turn the fire really high and then turn it off instantly let the egg settle so it turned to a yeah you got it sunny side of egg and then I take that out of the pan and then put the still hot pan back on the stove heat it up again pour in a little bit more oil throw in some bacon bits and green onion and salt and pepper and I fry that and then I throw in the rice fry the rice with the green pepper uh, uh, green onion and salt and pepper and bacon bits until the and once the rice is uh, pretty well fried then I take the sunny side up egg we set aside take a spoon break it up into pieces and then mix it in with the rice mix it in with the rice and then throw in a little handful of green onion at the very top as a as garnish and then you mix it really well this way your rice will not get all stuck together and you still get egg mixed in through with uh, throughout with your rice uh, but it won't make your rice all sticky and yucky like the first two ways I hope you have enjoyed this a little uh, cooking and cultural episode we'll be back again tomorrow for Toy Thursday for now thank you 谢谢 and 再见